So it's a tutorial day today. I'm gonna show you the four main tools I use and you should be using right now in Photoshop to retouch portrait photography, fashion photography, any photography that has models on it to retouch that skin. So I'm gonna show you the four main ones I use. There is more and this is by preference, but these four, they are a must. So let's start with this portrait. I've just color graded the picture in Lightroom with one of my presets you're gonna be able to get soon in my website because I'm doing a shop online, as I mentioned in a video before. Anyway, I've just color graded the picture in Lightroom. I didn't do anything else to the skin. I didn't do anything apart of color grading. So I'm gonna show you now, once I have the color, I open it in Photoshop and I start with these four tools I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see properly the skin of the model. There you go, even more. I recommend you to zoom in a lot. My worst mistake at the beginning was not zooming like properly and I was retouching the image from far away and then when you zoom in, you see you didn't do a very good job in the skin. So zoom in properly, even more than this. Okay, so the first tool I'm gonna show you is the Spot Healing Brush Tool. This one I would use for very small details and for hair as well, when there is one hair in the eye or in the cheek or any hair that is hanging around there and you don't want it there, this is very good for hair, for little details. So for example, I'm gonna start to show you with these little pores here. Make sure you take like a small size pen and you don't have to sample anything. You just have to brush over the defects and as you can see, Photoshop does an amazing job. It's incredible for it. So for small details, this one is the one to go, at least for me. I find this one is the best for these kind of things. By the way, uh, if you don't have a graphic tablet, please get one. Because time ago when I started, they were super expensive, like 300 or even more. But nowadays, the one I have, I think was like 100 something, not too much, to be honest, it's very affordable and it goes with Bluetooth, so you don't even have to connect cable and you have the pencil and it's super good for editing because you just have to brush, it's like you are painting. With the mouse, I used to do it like that years ago and I don't even know how I was doing it, but it's not accurate and it's a pain in the ass. So this one is very recommended. I'm gonna put mine in the link below so you can take a look. You can take any other, but this one is very popular out there and it works very well, I can tell you that. So anyway, let's go for the next tool. This one was the Spot Healing Brush tool and for small details, it works very well. So for bigger details, the one I like to use is the Pat tool. So the Pat tool, what it would do, I'm gonna go here. You just have to draw a circle, not super big, try to be as small as possible. And now it's selected, so all you have to do is drag that part very next to it. That's it. And then if you are in Mac with Command D, you deselect. And if you are in Windows, Control D, and you deselect. So I would do the same, circle, drag, Command D. Again, circle, drag next to it, Command D. Circle, drag, Command D, or Control D if you are in Windows. And that's it, guys, it's, it's incredible. It's very easy. That's it. I mean, it's kind of relaxing when I edit pictures this way. I don't know why, but I'm really focused and <laughs> I like it. It's relaxing for me. I like editing, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie, I love it. So many people hate it, I love it. So when people tell me, ah, why you don't get people to edit your pictures? It's like, I love editing my pictures. Plus it's part of the process as an artist, I guess. So yeah, so for bigger details, the pad tool is very good. I use a lot the pad tool for stock photography. If you are into it, you're gonna use it a lot because uh, to remove logos from clothing and stuff, the pad tool for me is the best tool to remove logos because you just go around the logo and you drag and it disappears. It's very, very useful. Make sure always it's as close as possible to the pads. So it's very accurate. You see, there you go. Command D to deselect and you can carry on like this forever to remove bigger details. It's very accurate, it's super good. Anyway, I'm gonna change the tool to keep showing you. So this one was the patch tool for, the small, uh, for bigger details. And then I'm gonna show you this one. This one is very useful, probably you know about it already, is the clone stamp. For this one, you need to sample. So you have to press the option key in the keyboard to sample 
the area next to it and make things disappear basically. Make sure it's 100% the opacity. So what you would do is, okay, I wanna, I'm gonna pick a smaller size. So I wanna make this disappear. So I clone next to it, make sure it's very close to it because it's gonna copy the light, obviously. Like you cannot copy this part of the skin because it's very dark. You cannot sample this because it's gonna draw it on top of this. I'll show you. I'm gonna sample this. And now I'm copying, you see, it's copying the skin, I uh, guess. So this is not gonna work, guys, don't do it this way. So, Alt or Option in Mac. You just press next to it and you start to clone. Keep sampling all the time, next to it, next to it, next to it, because otherwise it's gonna be very fake. So sample, drag, sample next to it, drag, sample, drag. I'm gonna try to remove this, you see, it disappears. But you have to sample really close to it, as I mentioned. And I use it even more for something I'm gonna tell you now, because for this thing I'm doing right now, I would still use the patch tool or the spot healing brush. But just so you know, the clone stamp can do these things as well, but I love to use it, for example, for shadows, unwanted shadows in the skin, or for uh, bags under the eyes, we all have, and more with the eights, unfortunately. So uh, I use it a lot for that. You see here, there is like a, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. There is like a lot of shadow here, which accentuates uh, the bags. So what I would do is take, again, the clone stamp, I will put a bigger brush. Hardness, always soft, super soft. So it's more gentle and more smooth, the effect. And then, there you go. And then you remove opacity, a lot. Maybe it's better little by little, you know, maybe 10% or 15. I'm gonna duplicate the layer, just so you know later, the before and the after better. And I'm gonna sample, for example, I wanna remove this shadow, not completely because otherwise it's unnatural. So what I'm gonna do is sample a lighter part, for example here, and then paint on top of the shadow. You can see it doesn't do much because my opacity is very low, but you keep repeating the process, sampling in the light part here, and then drawing, then another layer, because the opacity is very low, that's why it's very slow, but I prefer to do it little by little than do a lot and then mess up the picture. So I keep doing it, in the shadow. This is more destructive, guys. I'm not telling you this one is the best way to do it, because there is other ways to do all this stuff and it's less destructive. If you are, I don't know, if this picture is gonna be for printing in a billboard or something like that, you want to do something more complex and um, which is less destructive than this, but it's still like, is not so bad and for digital is amazing and you still can do it even for print to be honest but you will see before and after it makes a massive difference i'm gonna zoom out a bit so you remove a lot of the shadow so now that part under eye is less visible and i could carry on like editing as well this part i can see that it's an unwanted shadow here so i'm gonna do the same clone stamp opacity i'm gonna put a bit more to be quicker 20 reduce the size and then sample here because it's lighter and um, paint on top paint on top paint on top and you remove the unwanted shadows that makes that bag in the model so again before and after it's a very soft and delicate way to remove the shadows so this I use it a lot, even to remove like uh, shiny parts of the forehead. For example, let's go to it. This one is a bit shiny here. It's not so bad because you can see it's because of the sun and it's not burnt out neither, so it's good. I'm gonna take the spot healing brush, remove this thing over here. That's it, it's gone. And now I'm gonna take again the clone stamp, low opacity, 20, maybe a bit bigger this time, the pencil. And I'm gonna sample here to a darker area and then I'm gonna go on top of this to remove the shiny part of it when it's too bright or too white and you don't like it so white. That's it, I'll show you before and after. It's very gentle, but it makes a massive difference. So I use this trick a lot with the clone stamp, low opacity, and then 
I paint the shadows so I bright them up and it's not that heavy like the wrinkles as well for wrinkles is very useful for the underbags uh, this is very good for that and the last tool I'm gonna show you I'm gonna open another picture for that this one um, this one is from an advertising campaign I did for a fashion brand in London anyway so I'm gonna show you the tool called liquify which I use a lot to fix the hair of models. You can use it a lot um, to correct features as well, I'll show you now. So the first thing you're gonna do is to take this tool, the lasso tool, to select the area, because if you press liquify with the whole picture, sometimes the program can get like very slow. So just select the area, go to filter, liquify, and you just have the area opened. That's why it's quicker for Photoshop to open just one area of the picture than everything. And you're not gonna liquefy the whole area, so select roughly the head, and then you liquefy. So, uh, this one is the one I use the most, the first one, and it's to move stuff around. This is the size of the pencil, so you will see how good it is to retouch the hair. So, okay, I want more volume here, so you just have to press and drag very gently be careful so here as well and you are literally combing her hair making it with more volume but for example if you do this you messed up the picture come and set so there is one thing called masking which is this tool here freeze mask if you paint over here just to make sure, I mean, you can be precise without using mask, but sometimes you have to use it. So if you mask this part, you make sure, even if you are using this tool and you are a bit rough, the skin is not gonna be affected. So I'm gonna remove this, there you go. So the mask is very useful for that. I, I don't use it much because I'm quite precise with the pencil, but if you use the mouse and you are not that precise, it's good to mask things. I'm gonna press OK, Command D to deselect, and you will see the before and the after. <laughs> and it's, it's very good, and it was very easy, before, after. And you just put more volume in the model, and it's super easy to use, and when you have problems with the hair, so many times I shoot outdoors, so it's windy, and the hair is messy, and I didn't have a hairstylist with me that day, so what I do is in post-production, fix the hair with, uh, with the brush tool I showed you before. I remove hair I don't want in the picture, or I comb the hair with the liquify tool. And the liquify is as well for features. You can drag things around, correct the nose, maybe features of the chin, things like that. So uh, yeah, I saw you as well in the other one. With the liquify tool, you can do more stuff as well. Again, I'm gonna select the face, roughly, filter, liquify. So just so you know, there is this tool as well. I mean, this one is more for using in the body, maybe to shrink belly or things like that. But just to show you, this is to shrink and this is to bloat. So for example, I'm gonna put this one, I'm gonna put more size, and to make the eyes smaller, for example. You press here a bit, you see? I'm overdoing it, so you see what it does. It kind of shrinks what you are doing. I'm gonna reset. And then the other tool is the opposite, which is this one, is to bloat. And you would put more size, and you would make the eyes bigger. We don't want this in this picture, but just to show you it exists, I'm gonna cancel. And these are the tools I use the most. There is many others I use, but these four are crucial if you are a portrait photographer. This is crucial as well, the graphic tablet. is very inexpensive, it's an investment. I have this one for a couple of years already. I used to have another one before. They are very inexpensive, it's not like before. Time ago I couldn't get one because it was over 300. It was like a new thing to have and it was impossible for me to buy it. It was too much money in that time. Photography was my profession. But this one is very good for you to get it. And these four tools are the main ones. If you have any doubt or any comment, please just drop it below. I will be very happy to help if you have any question. And I will see you very soon, but please subscribe to my channel and like the video because it helps a lot. And see you soon.